Well, once again, um, greetings to everybody. Um, it, it's good to be together again after a, a break over, over Christmas. It's, it's, it's good to come back together again as a body and, and to fellowship and to hear the, the word of God. Um, the, the song Joe just sung, uh, and, and you'll, you'll get it right now, it, it really did quite blow me away this morning. Um, my message today, brothers and sisters, to, to all of you, is are you a sojourner? And uh, that song Joe sang is, is by one of the golden oldies, and I'm probably giving my age away, but not to folk like Val or Eric or uh, Tony or Philip. It's Jim Reeves. And, you know, I still listen to his music today. He was a godly man. That He was a real godly man. It wasn't just that he used to profess God and he was a godly man and he sang godly songs. But the question I'm coming back to, the message today is, are you a sojourner? Okay, so I've got a question. What is a sojourner in the Bible? Well, the answer is very clear. The term sojourner in the Bible refers to a person who is just passing through. That's where we're at. Um, this world has been turned upside down. There's no doubt about it. Um, and not just what's happened in the last three, four weeks or three weeks, but right from back in March last year. In fact, in fact, as I shared, um, um, Steph, earlier, I was last in Africa when I was in the middle of the Rift Valley in February last year. It's the last time I've been able to leave uh, London, actually. But London is not my home. Uh, the UK is not my home. Africa is not my home. I love Africa. Not my home. Because I'm just a passing through. And that's what we've got to understand at the moment of the times and the signs that we're living in is to not look at what's happening. In this. There's nothing in this world, brothers and sisters, that you should be surprised about if you know the word of God. So let's start with the word of God. And, and we always start with what, what the Lord has to share with us. Um, lots of scriptures. I hope you got your Bibles ready. I hope you can, you can check up on the pastor. That's, that's so important. Okay, turn to the, the book of John, please. Chapter 16, verse 33. And this is what the Lord says. This is what I love. You see, he's speaking now. And you're going to hear scriptures from Paul and John and the rest of them. But this is what the Lord is saying. These things I have spoken to you, that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation. Ah. But be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. All right. So before we go any further here, the, the Lord is telling us that in him we've got peace. Amen. Amen. I can't hear you guys coming back. You can lift your hands. All right. Give me a thumb. All right. That's, that's, that's settled. That's lovely. But he also says, you're going to have tribulations. Wow, oh, Fergus, are we going to have one of these? No, you're not going to have one of these messages. This message, I don't bring messages like that, by the way, but I'm, I'm, I'm a watchman. And I believe in warning people. I believe in preaching the gospel in its entirety. And Jesus Christ says, you're going to have tribulations. It can be health. It can be business. It can be um, marital issues. It, it can be people falling away and backsl. I don't know, whatever. We're going to have tribulations. I read something that was quite quite profound that I'm not I'm not even talking about this virus that's going around. It says a, a virus can close the world down. Can you imagine if we have the faith of a mustard seed? What would happen? As Christians, we should expect continuing tension with an unbelieving world. Don't forget that. We're living in an unbelieving world. We're living in a world that belongs to Satan. We're in this world. And that's why it's so important that we come together. That's so important that we come and pray together. 
that we share together. Because quite frankly, what I'm seeing, what I'm hearing, I'm, I'm in touch with a lot of people all around this world. That group of real believing Christians is shrinking. Why does the Bible say there's going to be a great falling away? Well, what do you think the falling away is going to be? The Lord's coming back for his bride. The Lord's coming back for his perfect, white, pure, clean, holy, righteous bride. That's what he's coming back for. Now, every one of us are sinners. Yes, there's no doubt. Saved by grace through faith. So, so don't think any of you are perfect. No, 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 you're not. Least of all me. But by the blood of the lamb. There go I. So that's, that's the Lord giving us this, this, this warning. Now, go backwards with me and go to the book of Psalms. And we're just going to tie everything up that's written in the Bible. Expository preaching, exposition of the word of God is what I love. Psalm 39, verse 12. Hear my prayer, O Lord, and give ear to my cry. Do not be silent at my tears, for I am a stranger with you. Here's the word, a sojourner, as all my fathers were. This is David speaking, who wrote most of the book of Psalms, the greatest king Israel ever had. But I, I missed what I'm going to share with you, but I got it this morning in my early, early quiet time again. And he says here, yeah, for I'm a stranger with you. Jesus was a stranger in this world, you know. He wasn't liked. He wasn't adhered to. Because he was different. He was a peculiar person. In fact, they disliked him so much. They crucified him. But David says, hear my prayer. We prayed today, and we're going to continue praying for, for our brothers and sisters. Here's the book. Still got it. All the names are in here. Friends of mine that pray with me, they don't know who's in here. They just say, that book, Fergus, we pray over. Hear my prayers. Of course he hears your prayers. Because he's a God that... He loves the fellowship with his children. And that's what we are. We are children. David was appealing for God's mercy because life is brief. But a vapor. You know, there's, there, there's fellows that I know that come from our old country, which used to be called Rhodesia. Uh, to me, Joanne, it feels like yesterday. Hey, Tony, Eric, it seems like yesterday we were running around in Bulawayo, bare feet, man, climbing trees, stealing mangoes from our neighbors. <laughs> and here, look now, life is brief. It's but a vapor. Where are we going? That's, that's the question, you see. Before I, before I came to, to the Lord, I lived every day as it came. Not thinking about where I was going. Where would I end up? That's what a so sojourner does. He's, he's a traveler. Let's move, move, let's move on to, to Philippians, please. Let's go into Philippians. I love the book of Philippians. We're going to turn to, to chapter 3 and, and um, verse 20. <coughs> Excuse me. The word of God. Paul is telling us, for our citizenship is in heaven, from which we also eagerly wait the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Let us not be so tied to this life that we would be sorry to see the return of the Lord. Now, now what, are you, what am I saying here? What am I saying? I know people that are very successful in business. I know people that are, are phenomenal sportsmen, not just in golf. You knew he's, I used to be a golf professional. I'm talking about 
sportsmen that play other sports, rugby, weightlifting, whatever, they're champions of the world. But, but we, cannot, we, we cannot get tied down with, with so much stuff. Like some of these billionaires and millionaires. No, no, Lord, <laughs> hang on a sec. I, I want to enjoy what I've earned and, and done. I, I want the accolades of men. Just hang on, hang on. I don't want you to come just yet. What? Our bags in this house are packed. They're ready. There's a, there's a young man in Johannesburg who I, I uh, mentored for many years, and I still mentor him. He's a pastor now, and um, I helped him plant his church, and um, he's become very successful, and he's got a very vibrant big church now. His first meeting was six people in a big church building. <laughs> Five of them were his family. Uh, but today, the young man is... He's got a wonderful church. But he said something to me a long time ago because his father was a pastor and this young man knew God. He said, Uncle Fergus, my main prayer in life is that there's nothing in this world that will keep me back from praying for the coming of the Lord. Now, he said that before his church grew to the size it is. And I still believe that young man He's got the same opinion because I know him very well. I'm still in touch with him. Don't let anything physical, relationships, keep you back. There's, there's nothing in this world that I want. Yes, I pray for Joe, my daughters, and my son and daughter-in-law that live in Boston in America. That as you all know, Joe and I have got somebody else waiting for us in heaven. He's just one of many that I'm going to. And I'm going to be there forever and ever. So, so why, why would anything in this, in this world want to keep me back? What? what, what? Because, because of my love for Africa, for my love to walk into the bush, for my... For my um, the highlight of, of my small ministry of finding that lost tribe in the middle of the Conga Basin last year in November. Uh -huh. There's nothing here. And that's what the world, you see, the world wants us to believe like that. We, we see the millionaires and the billionaires and the monarchies and, oh, my goodness gracious, what a lot of rubbish. You know, I, I said that years ago to a couple of uh, my friends, golf professionals, champions. I said, just remember something. Oh, you're a pastor now. Oh, really? You? <laughs> yeah, me. The reprobate, the, the party man. Yeah, I said, me. I said, but remember something. Your medals and your cups are going to mean zip in heaven. Didn't go down too well, I can tell you right now. Some of them are born again. Joe knows them. Some of them are still doing what they're doing, making more money, winning more trophies. Well, good luck to them. Not me. Uh-uh. That, that prayer that, um, Philip, that you prayed for this morning, all those things are childish, man. They're childish things. Yes, we've got to be good stewards. Yes, we've got to look after what we have. Yes, as farmers or as businessmen, the Lord will bless you. But why is he going to bless you? It's so that you can be a blessing to somebody else. Not that you can be a bigger more powerful, more uh, experienced, wealthy, five mercs, three planes, mega churches. What the, what, what's that going to do? Well, how is that possibly going to help you when that cry comes in the sky? You're not taking a thing with you as we move on. So we're moving on through this world. Relationships. Let us not be so tied to the, this life that we would be sorry to see the return or hear the, 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 the trumpet blow. And Corinthians also speaks to us about this. Let's go, to, let's go to 2 Corinthians, brothers and sisters. Let's move across to 2 Corinthians. Oh, I love turning these pages. You know, I don't mind cell phones, guys. I know you youngsters are all sharply, but me... 
Oh, this feels so good in my hands. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 20. Uh, where are my 2 Corinthians chapter 5? Let me give you the right chapter. Paul speaking again. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ. As though God were pleading through us. We implore you, implore you on Christ's behalf, be re reconciled to God. Okay, so Paul's calling us ambassadors. Now, those are the ones that are born again, filled with the Holy Spirit, living still on earth. Okay, what is an ambassador? He is simply an, an, a representative on behalf of one country to another. So, so if Paul is calling us an ambassador here, he's talking about our country, which is not here. Well, there's, there's two questions coming your way, one right now and one at the very end. Um, how well are you doing for Christ as an ambassador? We, we, we had a lovely, uh, lovely ministry on Friday night with a very special lady um, who's ministered in our church in London, and, and she came on with two other ladies and spoke to us. Um, Philip brought Corinthians 13. That's the chapter of love, obviously. But, but how are we living as ambassadors? Um, are, are you one thing when you walk out the door? Or when you come home, you're another thing? Are you, are you projecting this, this, this big image, or are you real? How, how are you, as a representative for God? I'm not talking about Messiah Ministries. I'm not talking about my brother's ministry or my son's ministry. I'm not talking about those guys. Nothing. They don't even come into the equation. What Paul is saying, yeah, you're representing Jesus Christ. He's the one that's going to say to you, oh, yeah, when you come before him, we're all going to do that. That's what people don't understand, every single one of us. And he's going to ask you. You lived for 74 years. What did you do for me? Where's your fruit? You were speaking for me. What you were saying from that pulpit or from that position in a crusade is not what I told you to say because it's not in the Bible. It's not biblical. So where, where, where did you get that from? That's a poor ambassador. You've got to represent what the Bible says. You've got to represent what Jesus Christ teaches us. You know, in Matthew 28, 18 to 20, the Great Commission, it says, teach them all the things I taught you. Teach them all the things I taught you. Not what you think. Or well, some guy reads, writes a book and he's got a revelation. Oh, really? Well, I don't know about you, brothers and sisters. I'm tired of people's revelations. Yes, there are prophets and there are true prophets. We had one on Friday night. But there's a heck of a lot of prophets walking around now with egg on their face, isn't there? If it, if, it, if it doesn't come from the word of God, I'm not interested. I'll still love you. But don't talk to me unless you bring the scriptures that are relevant to what you're sharing with me. Because that's the only thing that I have. Sola Scriptura. It's the only thing Joe and I can go back to and look at and believe. The written word of God, whether it's the King James or the New King James. Those are the two Bibles I carry. I don't carry any other Bibles. I'm not against these other Bibles. I know they're good ones, bad ones, whatever. Those are the two. Because the King James that was written 
the streets of this country I'm living in are full of blood of the martyrs and the men and women of God that were burnt at the stake for believing this, for preaching this very word. I'm coming down just now to one of my favorite scriptures, which I'm going to share with you. So my question to you again, this is another one. You can go and think about it and pray about it. Or pray about it, then think about it. That's probably better. How good an ambassador are you? <coughs> no, there's no perfect man. I know that. Least of all me. But we serve a God that we can get onto our knees and repent. For what? Being a bit short, being a bit uh, fiery, uh, for, for not listening long enough to some folk. I'm not talking about salvation here. I'm talking that not doing what God has called you to do. And we can repent. We can repent of that and then get off your knees and say, right, here we go again. Oh, well, you know, I, I don't know. It's, it's pretty cold out there. And, I, uh, and not one of the ones that have walked with me have said that, by the way. Uh, I'll, I'll just leave Pastor Ferguson just to go out. I'll just stay in my bed today. Oh, really? That's a great ambassador, that is. That's where we've got to be now in these end times. You've got to be sold out for Jesus. You've got to be real. You've got to be transparent. It's got to tie up. And that's what's happening to the churches today. That's what's happening with the ministers today is what they preach and how they live doesn't tie up. My father, my father always said, Joe's my witness. That Highlander. He said, don't ask Fergus anybody to do something you're not prepared to do. Don't ask anybody to do something that you're not prepared to do. And that's what Jesus Christ is, is asking us to do, is to be ambassadors for him, a real ambassador. And, I, and why does he, Joe's just whispering in my ear, why, why does he bother using us? He's done it all anyway, we know that. But he chooses to use people. That's why so, so many times when I meet with, with the, the sportsmen that I know, uh, I'm losing touch with a lot of them now because most of our ministry is in the bush in Central Africa, but in London now, a, a, as this ministry has been noted, very much so. Is being an ambassador, being real. That's what I love about golf, professional golf. None of you play golf. I don't think a few of you maybe tried when you sign that scorecard at the bottom, that's what you shot for the day. There's no remarks column. Most golfers are realists. Let's move along. We're moving to the end of the Bible now because we're going to end off in the most awesome, awesome scripture in Revelation. But right now, let's go to uh, 1 John. Right at the back of the Bible. Turn to 1 John uh, chapter 2. And I'm going to read from verse 15. 1 John chapter 2. Where am I? 1 John chapter 2. And I'm coming down to 15. Okay. Do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Do your actions reflect the world's values or God's values? Do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. What, 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 is, what is possibly standing between you and a major breakthrough? What is standing between you and being really used by Jesus Christ? 
is is it is it pride is it business is is, is it homes cars is it your wife is it your husband what's standing between you and the love of Jesus in this world there's many things brothers and sisters John says also the less of me and more of him I don't I don't really see that in, in anymore with, with 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 what's going on in this world because man it's it's just it's just promotion it's just get our name out there get our name our name out there we're trying to reach the lost. We're trying to reach. We're trying to reach people with the word of God. We're trying to reach people, Joanne, with Jesus Christ, not Fergus Bucken, least of all him. Jeez, who the hang is he? He's just a sinner saved by grace through faith. That's all he is. That loves Jesus Christ, warts and all. But, but brothers and sisters, obedience is better than sacrifice. Amen. Amen. So if I'm told to go and do something, I'll do it. He has my witness right here. My greatest critique is sitting next to me on the right-hand side. I'll do it after much prayer, fasting, breaking bread, taking counsel. Yes, because the Bible says in the counsel of many is what? Wisdom and, and safety. But am I going to listen to what the world tells me or am I going to listen to what Jesus Christ is telling me? We cannot be caught up in this world, brothers and sisters. We cannot be caught up in this world. I'm telling you now, I've said it again and again and again. People are building kingdoms, empires. And then there are people in Africa. There are people in parts of London. They're starving. But I don't know, you know, um, you know I'll, 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 I'll give this much. Because, you know, let somebody else give. We had, we had a young man that came in, came through our ministry, got saved and born again in the Valley of the Thousand Hills where we worked for four years, my son, Joanne, and myself. And I got a heartfelt plea in, De in December. I wasn't led to answer it. And in January, uh, well, last week, I said to Joe, I said, I think we've got to help this young man. And this young man said to me, um, Dad, I closed, I closed 2020 in tears and despair. He says, I'm, I'm opening 2021 in joy. He said, my four months rent that I owed is paid for. My kids can go back to school and I put food on the table. And he's blessed other people. No, 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 we're nothing special. No, no, no. But I prayed about it first. Because I tell you what, we open up the, the laptop, we open up the uh, the cell phone. I mean, there's just pleas all over. I mean, most of them are, are, are for healing and for 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 uh, prayer. George Muller. Fourth. Now you're talking about a godly man, George Muller, the orphanage man. Remember Bristol? Give me a thumbs up if you know who I'm talking about. Thank you. There, that went up very quickly, Ashley. They reckon about three million pound went through his hands in his ministry with the orphans in 1850, 1860, that era. They, they don't know what that's worth today. When Muller died, his wife died first and he died later. They went into his bedroom and he had, I think, two suits, one pair of shoes and two shirts. That was his wardrobe. His bank account, his personal bank account, had three shillings and sixpence in it. <coughs> he was a sojourner. His rewards now, as in, in Zululand, they say angas. 
I don't know. But I'm telling you, they must be huge. I've jumped the gun here. So we're going to go backwards now to my favorite book in the Bible. That's good. That was, that, that, that was probably the right way to do it. Thank you, Father, for Holy Spirit, for taking me there. Go back to the book of Hebrews, please. Hebrews. Whoa, here we go. What is Hebrews known as, brothers and sisters? It's the faith. book full of faith but it's also full of heroes i want to read hebrews 11:16 but now they desire a better that is a heavenly country therefore god is not ashamed to be called their god for he has prepared a city for them. Yeah. They desire a heavenly, they, they want a better country. They, they don't, they're not, they're not here, they live here. I mean, you just go across to, uh, stay in 11, chapter 11. Let's just go across to, uh, uh, verse 36, we're still in chapter 11. Still others had trial of mockings, scourgings, yes, and of change and imprisonment. It gets worse. They were stoned. They were sawn in two. They were tempted, were slain with the sword. They wandered about in sheepskins and goatskins, being destitute, afflicted, and tormented. Verse 38 says, of whom the world was not worthy. Oh, you know, Brother Bucken. Oh, well. Oh, I don't know if I can do that. Oh, okay. Well, don't do it then. You can ask my entire family. The Lord tells me to do it, I'll do it. These people of faith died without receiving all that God promised. Remember that now. But never lost their vision of heaven Asterix, a better country, a heavenly one. Take courage, brothers and sisters, when you read this. Because, according to the word of God, according to Matthew 24, whoo we're in for a bumpy ride this year. Put your seat belts on. I don't know if we have to go into the hills. I don't know if they're going to cut us in two or stone us. I don't know. I don't know. But I know that the Lord says to be worse than the days of Noah, Sodom and Gomorrah. But they never gave up. But now, everyone on the screen, they desire a better, that is, a heavenly country. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he has prepared a city for them. Not London, not Johannesburg. Not Durban, Val. Who the heck wants to live in Durban? <laughs> Sorry, Val. I'd rather be in Durban than London. But anyway. Actually, you know what I'd rather be, Joe? In the middle of the Congo Basin, where everything I saw was planted by God. Everything I saw, including the pygmies that we found, was planted and put there by God. I never saw a fir tree. I never saw a wattle tree, Aussies, Australians. Everything that was there was there. And that pales compared to what he has prepared for us. What we are going forward for, what we are moving through for. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not yet seen. It's impossible to please him without faith. What is our faith? The faith is the heavenly country. We, we've got to get across the line. We, we've got to finish the race, brothers and sisters. We, we've got to get to that country, no matter what the cost. No matter what the cost, we've got to get there. 
where we're not ashamed of God in this world, are we? Because if you are ashamed of God in this world, the scriptures are very clear. Deny me before man, and I'll deny you before my Father, which is in heaven. That's why when you minister and you speak about what you are, tell people you serve Jesus Christ, Son of God. Jesus Christ, Son of God. Talk about God. Oh, well, you're pretty much okay. There's lots of gods in this world. Lots of religions have gods. But there's no religion where God has a son. Jesus Christ, son of God, is who we serve. No mistaking. In closing, I'm closing too soon. I should preach for another hour. How's that? Is that all right? Can we go another? <laughs> I'm going to ruin somebody's roast. Revelation, the last book. Revelation 21, verse 3. <clears throat> and I heard a loud voice from heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people. God himself will be with them and be their God. We don't know how the new earth will look or where it will be, but God and his followers, those whose names are written in the book of life, will be united to live there forever. This particular family has lived in a lot of countries. This particular family has had a lot of homes. And this ministry has traveled extensively. But at the end of my time on this earth, talking for me and Joe, Fraser, Kirsty and Sheena, Ali's already there. Ali's there. Where we go next is forever. So, so the Bible says, so the afflictions of this life are for a short time. But the benefits of our eternity Aren't they? So, so my next move, brothers and sisters, unless the Lord tells me to leave London and uh, where would you like to go and live, Joe? Alaska. It's cooler. Alaska. She likes the cold weather. Unless the Lord tells me to do that, my next stop is going to be with the Father in heaven where he is my God. And I will not be ashamed to say, I'm not ashamed to call him my God now, by the way. You can ask anybody that's on the screen that knows me. I've gotten to, yeah, anyway. And, and, and his people, which is us, will be with him. We don't have politics there. We don't have sicknesses there. We, do, we don't have kings and queens there. We have a king. A king. We don't have worship teams there because we're all going to worship. We have one language. We have one father. Forever and ever. That's where we're moving. That's where we are going. But until we get there, what do we do? Well, oh, there you go. See, she knows me. My brother actually, I must speak to him about that. He stole that from me. <laughs> He sent a message out this week. The great man Martin Luther, who Joe and I have studied and lived in the very country, the very province that he worked and lived. Somebody said to him, one of his scholars, Dr. Dr. Martin Luther, by the way, no dummy. What would you do if you knew for certainty tomorrow Jesus Christ is coming? He said, I'd go outside and plant an apple tree. Why? Because the Germans like apples? No. He wanted to be found working. That's where we're going to be found. We're going to be found working when he calls us. Brothers and sisters. My second. I said it was two questions, didn't I? Well, here's the second one. Will you be there?
Father, I thank you for this time. I thank you, Lord Jesus Christ, for who you are and the blood you shed. Oh, Lord, for your, for your pastors, for your men and women of God, for your children, for people that just pick up the Bible and just preach the Bible. People, Lord, that are not ashamed to be called children of God, the Most High, followers of the way, believers. We thank you, Lord, that, that we wouldn't be sidetracked or derailed on our journey, which is perilous and treacherous like the pilgrim's progress. But Christian got there. Christian got there eventually. And so will we by your grace. We thank you, Lord Jesus Christ, for your blood and your love for us. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Thank you, John. Take the recording off. Okay.